What's up guys, Chris here. So today we're checking out the Power Flies. We're gonna start with the Power Fly 4. That is Trek's entry level setup. If you wanna see a full shop tour, let us know in the comments down below. A um, few people have been asking. This is obviously closed down time. I come in after hours and do this, but yeah. So let's check out the Power Fly 4. So the Powerfly 4 is definitely one of the fastest growing bikes right now in popularity and just overall chit chat, like everything about them e-bikes, I go into the moon. Okay, so something cool about the Powerfly 4, one, we have a lot of them in stock, more in boxes than back, but we also have the last year's Powerfly 5 in stock, which is a rarity, it's in an extra large, but it's still a cool comparison to see because the Powerfly 5 is not made anymore. They've gone straight to a Powerfly 4, then it jumps all the way up to the full suspension Powerfly 4s, which we've been selling boatloads of. If you're looking for a kind of casual, but also capable bike, the Powerfly FS4 is astounding. Plus, when you're already spending five grand on a bike, you know, spending a little bit more and getting that full suspension is normally well worth it. So the Powerfly 4 this year, what they have got is a pretty simple setup. Ridiculously awesome power spec. So the shifting on these ones is really nice. It goes to that simple one by, it is a one by 10, so it is a Dior 10 speed, but it's got this huge range to it, so it's very simple, very easy to use. Plus, because you're losing a few increments in other bikes, I may say this is a downside, you'll lose a bit of energy or, or not find that perfect gear but you still kind of have gears on the other side, which is the electric system. So if you need a little more boost or just can't find the right gear, you can just supplement with an electric system, which is fantastic. So on its own as a regular part spec shifting set, fast, nice, works well, and now it doesn't have the downside anymore. Braking wise, it's got some nice hydraulic disc brakes to it, so these will stop you just fine. You need a good brake because you are pushing a you know 50 pound bike down a hill, plus potentially going a little faster than you used to just because of the weight and electric kind of push combined. Suspension wise with the Powerfly 4, they've gone to a simple spring setup with the lockout. So the lockout means you can turn off your suspension, makes things really simple. The spring side of it means there is no air chamber to fill up. Again, when you're looking at these bikes, generally everyone who's hunting at these bikes are people looking to either keep their casual riding and mountain biking going, less caring about the higher performance of it, and that's what the Powerfly series is for. Whether it's the full suspension or the hardtail, that's really what Trek has done here. Trek has really designed a bike which can just be, I'm commuting, I'm getting up there in age, but deciding a little faster of the bike would be nicer or easier up the hills, or if you're commuting around town, you need a simple setup, comfy kind of geometry, and you don't need these fancy kind of features. As well, going to a higher price air shock on this low level of a bike isn't gonna make that big of a difference except for in the price. The frame is an aluminum frame on this one, so it is a nicer lightweight frame. Um, obviously this bike still weighs around the 50 pound mark. All the cables are really neatly integrated, so it looks really clean, it looks smooth. It does not come with a dropper post, which you may or may not have heard of, and that's controlling your seat up and down. These ones don't, but you could upgrade that if you wanted. I'm sure there's one in a shop to compare to, but I don't think it's really needed on this level of bike. Again, once you go to a full suspension version, where you might do more trails, more aggressive stuff, or you're looking at the Trek rail or similar, then the dropper post becomes necessary. But as just potentially a commuter and a casual get around bike, this is gonna do all that and then keep that price down again. Quick release front wheels, rear wheels as well. So it all comes with a removable Allen key tool, which uh, can kind of both wheels will pop off really easily with a thicker shaft uh, through axle. So let's talk electronics. So this has the Bosch Performance CX line. It is pretty much the top of the line model for motor. It can be tweaked to have 85 Newton meters of torque, which is pretty industry high. Um, most of them are still sticking around the 70 for a nice comfortable kind of acceleration. The 85 is pretty peppy to be honest in that turbo mode, you are accelerating really fast. So depending which mode you're in, it does increase the amount of torque at the highest level, 
with a setup through Trek special kind of setup, you can have up to 85 Newton meters and that's really fantastic. So the battery lasts a nice long time. I wouldn't even be concerned about that. If you're using turbo, you're probably getting 30 to 40 plus kilometers. And if you're using eco, you're probably 80 to 100 kilometers. Like it's hard to guesstimate. It's kind of like car gas mileage. If you haven't rode a e-bike before, they run differently. So with the Bosch system, it detects as you're pedaling because the motor's in the center of the crank set. It detects as you're pedaling, how hard you're pedaling and then assists a little bit more boost depending how hard you're pedaling. So if you're pedaling really gently, it really only assists gently. As you pedal harder and harder, it actually kind of exponentially increases the amount of assistance. Therefore feeling one, super natural in the riding side of things. And two, it also creates the most energy efficient one. So you're not just always going full out energy burn when you're just trying to have a casual cruise, you know? Makes it really nice. Bosch make only high quality stuff. I kind of like that Trek chose them instead of trying to develop their own system or go with a newer company. They've been doing this for like 10 plus years now over in Europe with these electric systems. Their batteries are rated for 10 plus years. I wouldn't even worry about battery longevity. They're pretty easy to take care of. They are removable, so you can take them out, charge them in your home. So if you're looking at an e-bike and this is your first video into it, the Powerflex 4 would be a great option for you. The way the Bosch system works is super smooth, super easy to use, and just runs fantastically. It just feels like you're riding a bike, except you are way stronger or it, it just is easier. Everything about it is easy. The shifting is nice and easy, it's simple. If you're coming from an older bike, you've just got the one gear on the front. They come with the comfort grips and a comfortable seat on it. So this is something we would regularly upgrade people to, but now it comes stock with that seat comes with a nice tire size so it's actually super easy to um, ride in any terrain and again it doesn't really matter anymore what terrain you do the electric is always there to boost you if you feel slow on the flats or something along those lines with the smaller frames you do get more of a swoop and that is doesn't matter if it's men's or women's it is the same frame throughout so the Trek Powerfly really is this entry level into e-bikes but they don't really make an entry level motor and electric system yet, which is high quality enough to put in a Trek level of bike. The shifting on it, not only being fast and easy to use, it'll make it a lot simpler and cleaner on the handlebars. You have your electric controls on the left side and the shifting on the right side, and that's about it. Your brakes, comfort grips. They do come with quite a few rack mounts, so you have bottle cages there. Rack mounts on the rear, but you do need to buy an additional collar for the seat post and um, to allow like a rear rack to it. Not sure why they chose to do that, but that's something. I know some of them we've seen shift with the, an extra collar, but not all of them. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And um, the suspension on it works really well. So it's just the first time you're checking out kind of e-bikes and wondering what they're all about. This here is where the battery is contained. And down here, this teeny little thing is the motor. It runs super efficiently. I have heard some people say that the Bosch system is a little louder than other systems. Honestly, they're super quiet. Like, yes, maybe you can hear a little bit of whining if that's the noise you want to call it, you know, the electric motor noise. But once you're on a trail or on a road, you're going to have more tire noise than anything. And it'll just be one of those things that maybe when you're test riding it and you're focusing really hard on it, you'll hear it. The battery systems are all removable with a key on the far side and then it pops out really easy to take out. Um, there is a charger on the bottom of that as well. With the Powerfly 4s, they have put a larger chain ring on the front, so that'll make it a nice fast paced commuting speed as opposed to an easy gear when climbing. Again, on a regular bike, I might say, oh, this is quite a large chain ring, but with the electric, now if you have a difficult climb, you just use the electric assist and you'll get up the hill no problem. Pretty much any downside to a regular bike, the electric system fixes in this. And that's a pretty simple way to do it. And that is super broad over everything. If your shifting just doesn't feel right gear, right whatever, just boost it up a little bit and you'll make it. If the terrain's too difficult, just boost it up. You'll get through it. And they do have a sweet walk mode. So if you even have to get off and push your bike, you don't need to be worried about having a really heavy bike to kind of push up the hill. You can press a combination of the bottom button and then up, and then it'll uh, do that. So I'll show you that one quick. Also this lower button here, and you press it 
walk plus will display for three seconds but if you press it and then hold this it will actually have the bike move forward and this pushes the bike at the most perfect pace ever to go up a hill i've used it before up an actual hill it's absolutely perfect um it just takes all the weight away from the heaviness of this bike and puts it into an easy pushing mode. So Trek has a custom one here, which is the e-mountain bike mode. This one is designed with Trek and Bosch together. Essentially, they designed a system which is gonna allow you to ride super efficiently on the flats and then get a bigger boost when you go for the higher torquey hills. So it kind of switches between the turbo mode, but the more touring mode to allow kind of the most efficient use of the battery without having to shift up and down in the electric system a lot. It's kind of cool. On the bottom button, you press and hold and it'll go through your odometer, obviously your trip, your odometer, the total range, and this will change based on your battery life and the mode you're on. So as you can see, you go all the way to eco with a pretty much full battery. You're getting 55 miles. And I don't know why this one's in miles per hour and 27 miles. The Powerfly 4 has all the bells and whistles and will get you up that hill. Until you test ride one, you won't fully understand it, but an e-bike is probably the best bike you'll ever own. I can guarantee you will ride more. I don't think I've spoke to anyone who used to do a 5K loop, who just does that 5K loop now, but now they're cheating. No, now they're doing 20 kilometer loops instead of a 5K loop. And that's serious, you know? I've sold bikes to people who I've seen end up doing 300 kilometers in their first month when they went from zero kilometers the month before. So if that isn't proof that it'll get you on the trail, get you exercise and get you out there, I don't know what is. Like, they just work well. They are really good bikes and they just operate fantastically. So without much more to say, if you haven't got an e-bike, you should probably go get one. This was a brief review of the Trek Powerfly 4 for 2021. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions below or if you think there's a good competitor to it. Um, otherwise, good luck.